Welcome to the New York Now podcast, a modern wholesale market for retailers and specialty buyers seeking diversity and discovery. Gathering twice a year in America's design capital, New York City, it's where buyers and designers unearth a refreshed and dedicated collection of eclectic lifestyle products. This episode has been brought to you in collaboration with New York Makers. New York Makers, founded in 2012, is an online marketplace and magazine where every product has a New York story. The marketplace offers a curated selection of unique and mindfully designed items from handcrafted to high tech, created across New York State. The magazine features inspiring personal stories of local talent, offering their insights and resources, travel guides, and New York living. Join us today as we dive deeper into the art of New York makers and what that story entails. Silda Wall Spitzer, an innovative businesswoman, lawyer, and former first lady of New York State, co-founded New York makers to promote local sustainability, statewide connectivity. She believes that thriving makers are the heart and dynamic of a resilient economy and community, making New York makers the first of its kind. Amanda D. Robella, COO and Editor-in-Chief of New York Makers, has been actively involved in promoting, supporting, connecting, and mobilizing the nationwide maker community for the past 10 years in and around the tri-state area. Patty Hughes is passionate about people, who they are, what they do, and where they go. Patty has been an on-air segment contributor for The Rachel Ray Show and The Wendy Williams Show an on-air personality for the Food Network, production coordinator for New York Fashion Week's Sinclair Broadcasting Group, and senior VP of programming for the Style Network. As an entrepreneur, Patty has formed her own TV production company, now executive producing her own show. The next exciting project is Patty Finds It For You. She finds what you need before you know you need it. The magazine style format will focus on innovative people, products, and services. Debuting in 2021, the lifestyle show will be nationally syndicated in local stations throughout the country. Thank you, Dondrell. I'm here to welcome Silda former First Lady of New York State. She's a co-founder, CEO, and the publisher of New York Makers. And Amanda, the COO and the editor-in-chief of New York Makers. I have to say, I am a proud New Yorker, born and raised, Western New York, and I absolutely love my state and all it has to offer. I am so excited to interview you ladies. I've checked out the website. I cannot wait to share these stories and learn more about your journey. So let's get into this. I'm really excited about this. Who is New York Makers, Amanda? Thank you, Patty. It's um, wonderful to meet you. Um, So New York Makers is a platform for the incredibly creative and talented makers of New York State. We have carefully built a curated online marketplace for one-stop shopping of the goods of many of our favorite leathersmiths, tinsmiths, blacksmiths, maple producers, homesteaders, weavers, jewelry designers, 3D product designers, and so on. We produce pop-up shops too. We have a long-standing pop-up in the Catskills in a small, charming town called Mountaindale within a storefront called Forage and Gather Market. Um, We also have a digital magazine where we work with writers in different regions of the state to tell the stories of makers and their communities as well as other enriching state-related stories of exploration and discovery. That is wonderful. Silda, tell me about the foundings of New York Makers. Absolutely. This began a long time ago when I was so um, inspired traveling around the, the state in my capacity as First Lady and meeting folks in all the counties who were simultaneously really suffering from uh, economic need and also running, having these amazing businesses and, and ideas that they, were, that they were doing on a shoestring and very locally. And I realized that there was not a lot of communication among the different regions of the state and felt like that if their platform were more uh, expanded, that other people would love to 
discover their products and hear their stories and um, that it would be more of a benefit to all as opposed to just staying so atomized. And so that was really an inspiration combined with then learning that uh, there had never been a state magazine for New York. And seeing that is kind of emblematic of this uh, disconnectedness. And again, feeling like there could be so much power in raising up and having a, a platform that would allow people to connect, not just across the state, but also for people uh, around the country and elsewhere to, to see us uh, as a statewide kind of collective. So that, that's the background for New York Makers. And it took quite a while because it started off with uh, sort of being inspired by a traditional magazine format and the publishing industry really ran into some some difficult times there right about that moment. So I kind of shelved the idea. And then uh, a few years later, just had the light bulb go off and say, wait, we can do this digitally and we can tell the stories and we can have the marketplace. And so we started working on it. It has been a real labor of love. And it has always been uh, driven by this um, mission of trying to create a broader economic platform for the makers across the state uh, and also to tell their stories and stories about their community and hopefully build a more connected kind of tissue for our state in the process. That's why I love that you were filling a void. I love that. You saw a need and you addressed it. I think everyone in New York State really admires that. That's wonderful. I have to say, I love that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's move on to, I'd like to know, tell us about your makers and what brings the product to New York Makers platform. Um, Amanda? Sure. So there's a number of ways that we find our makers and that makers find us. We find makers at farmers and makers markets some we've known for a long time just from being advocates of this community for many years. Uh, social media has been helpful in finding makers. Um, if we do discover a maker on social media, we uh, typically order from them to test their product or we pay them a visit or find them at a public market um, or at one of their local stockists, if that applies. There's a fun story about a friend of New York makers sharing a cab on an extra busy day uh, from LaGuardia um, with a now New York maker. They started talking and she, uh, Stephanie Golden, told our friend about her New York City based toffee business. And the next day we had a package of samples delivered to us. So Biggie's Crack Toffee joined New York makers a few days later. Uh, and then on the flip side, makers find us through other makers or friends and family who may know us or of us and then through pop-ups and events. When I was doing this interview, I was telling friends of mine about it, and they were like, how can we get involved? I was like, oh, good. So this is really good. It's so impressive. Just over. To us. We would love to <laughs> send them our way. We would love to connect with them. <laughs> um, okay, with the pandemic and pending, so many businesses around the nation, what do you find is the need in our local maker community? Silda? Well, the, I think the need is so great for our local makers. I think some of the larger stores have been able to weather this in a way that it, it has proven to be much more challenging for the individual makers, uh, many of whom uh, their busy seasons are in the summer when they have markets and things like that that have now been canceled um, that they can't go to. And so... I feel like because we were digital to begin with, in a way, we, we were really well positioned to be able to respond by redoubling our efforts to tell the stories of our makers and to get their products before people and also to connect at the level of what can we do to respond to this situation and so uh, I think Amanda will tell you a little bit more about some of the things that we did to, to do that. But I feel like we were, we've always been mission driven. And this was a moment that has shown how important 
community and being there for each other is, and that really is what New York Makers is all about. That's great. Yes, Amanda, please um, expound on that, please. What were some of the innovative things that the New York Makers did the create and emulate? Of course. Um, so I think first, uh, it's important to say that, you know, we all felt some degree of uncertainty in the very beginning of this pandemic. Um, I think we all still do. Uh, even before the stay at home orders, we felt the shift in focus and energy and we proactively reached out to our makers to one, you know, remind them that we are here to support them. And two, to brainstorm ways to keep the momentum going and to be helpful to others in need. Uh, so together we uh, implemented uh, free shipping for the first month. Uh, some makers decreased their product costs. Some makers were offering a pay what you can. Um, others were making masks. They were donating sales proceeds to food banks, you know, same as we were. Then as the situation worsened, we realized that they too, the makers, needed resources as well. So we created the New York Makers Resource Center, which uh, lives on our website. Um, we researched grants and loans and other relief programs and organized them into one location. Um, our inspiring maker stories and video interviews, as well as wellness for makers stories, uh, can all be found on this resource bank on our website. Uh, we launched a New York Makers podcast. We co-hosted a Hidden Values Masterclass webinar for our makers. We have a dedicated page for equality resources, and we're in the process of building out our community forum and event sections. Uh, the other issue that COVID-19 brought up is that of the supply chain. And one of our missions is to build a comprehensive maker's material network that hones in on local supply chains. Oh, that's great. This is a prime example of we're stronger together. Prime example. I love how that you worked cohesively to make everyone comfortable. That's, that says a lot. Um, as a company, that says a lot. Uh, as a New Yorker, that says a lot. I have to say that's that's really inviting for the makers. That's really great. I love that. <laughs> it also reflects on the on the community as a whole. You know, we've found that um, so many of them are so so kind, so thoughtful, and I think you know, obviously, that plays into their their the way that they make things, what they make, how they make them, what they make them out of. It, it's all kind of uh, connected in a way. That's great. Thank you. Let's talk about the magazine. Silda, can you walk us through the inspiration, the experience, and what we will expect to see for the fall? Yes. Well, the, the magazine is really designed to highlight the stories of the makers, uh, put them front and center, also tell stories of other makers who, who might make different kinds of products that are, you know, whether whether it's a, a movie or whether it's a, a kind of an artist uh, that doesn't necessarily do a product that we we're going to sell on the, the traditional marketplace. Uh, and so we love being able to have that broader format. And we also are telling stories about uh, their communities, events that are happening, things that are around the state. I mean, one of the things that's coming out um, this month is, telling people about uh, trips that they, other, that they otherwise would have done as part of their New York fall, that um, maybe they're not certain whether that's a good idea or not. And uh, we've got some suggestions of places to go for leaf peeping and, and apple picking that um, are set up in such a way, a lot of this is outdoor activity, uh, so that they can still participate in that. And we also are going to highlight some of the restaurants around that are now doing takeout as opposed to dining in or eating outside, but are such a wonderful part of our culinary uh, richness of this state. And so we're really excited to be highlighting that. Coming up in October, we're going to be focusing on an intrepid state of mind. Each, each month, we like to organize around a different New York state of mind. So, uh, we felt like Intrepid was very appropriate for October as we all are so uh, determined to, to stand strong and face whatever challenges are coming our way. In November, we're going to be in a treasure state of mind, which we felt like really includes a lot of that 
holiday uh, spirit and what it is that we really treasure and what is of value. Uh, and then December, we are going to be in a celebratory state of mind because we are going to have gotten to the end of 2020. <laughs> And we are very much looking forward to 2021. Um, I'd like to know this, Amanda. What makes a story matter and why must we continue to amplify handmade stories? I think stories are experiences that we all learn from if we choose to. Uh, some resonate more uh, with each of us as individuals than others. The important thing is that stories keep us curious and connected. Uh, stories amplifying the handmade message are reminders of the thoughtfulness and the process behind a, ha a handmade product. Oh, that's great. I love that. It gives such a sense of home, too, and which I think we all, all need right now, and comfort. So I think Absolutely. that's really important. I like that. Um, I understand that New York Now's Handmade Focus was recently featured, highlighting their commitment to handmade. Give us a tiny sneak peek. One October feature we are very excited about is in an interview we will be publishing in our digital magazine with uh, New York Now's Allison Garofalo, the director of sales for Handmade, on the handmade process um, and handmade products. Uh, it's a really wonderful digital meeting of the minds um, because our missions are so aligned. So uh, New York makers, in addition to our marketplace and, and us working with uh, other makers across the state. Silda and I are actually makers as well. And <laughs> we create an also handmade product, handcrafted product, and it's called Silda's Jam. Uh, I, I'll briefly get into the story of how that came to be. I think we'd need a whole nother podcast for the, the longer length version of the story. But it all started a few years ago uh, during the holidays. I, uh, I was at Silda's. I saw that there were like 200 jars of jam in her living room and she was shipping them out to friends and family. And she told me that this was a tradition that she'd been doing for a long time. And then she explained to me that she makes her jam with New York maple syrup. And that is something I had never heard of before. Um, and I thought that was extremely unique and I loved it. And I think sort of the rest is history. The wheel started turning. We, um, we felt it was important to become more of makers ourselves uh, because I think it helps us to understand the people that we work with on a daily basis. You know, the challenges, the rewards, it's all related. And so uh, we embarked on this this new project and um we have 11 flavors of jam right now which is which is pretty incredible uh considering we started with just a few and uh we have a couple of different stockists we sell we obviously sell the jam on newyorkmakers.com and the jam is one of the items that we will be bringing to the digital market in october and so uh, we will have the Silda's jam. Um, we will, which is also made with local fruit, uh, not you know, not just New York maple syrup. We we do source our fruit locally from farms um, in the Hudson Valley, and um, and then we will also have some some porcelain uh, home goods um, that we made in collaboration with. Uh, that we we designed in collaboration with a maker also based in the Hudson Valley. Um, so we, those are our, our own products, our exclusive products. And then we also have a candle, a uh, red currant candle that is made in, in collaboration with another one of our makers. Um, and then some of our makers, their brands themselves, they'll be joining us on our, uh, on our, our page um, for the digital market. And we're very excited about that too. Well, I've had that jam and it's really yeah. good. <laughs> it's Yay. Well, that makes us so happy. Yes. So happy. Even right out of the jar. Yeah, it's really well, good. I have since I was impressed. <laughs> one, one thing that goes to the, the, um, those products that we are making under our own brand, we are, we are using those to take the proceeds and put them back into sustaining New York makers. Oh, that's, that's great. That's great. 
Okay, Silda, um, you were featured in Oprah's O Magazine for spring 2020 for this. We really were. We really I, were. I, I, mean, I can't even get through to say it because that's big time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's golden. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? I will. So, you know, it, it was it was such an honor and a surprise that, you know, everything came together. Uh, we found out about it three days before the world dispersed for COVID oh, in wow. New York. And so it was kind of like this blessing. It's like, we cannot let Oprah down. So <laughs> how, how are we going to get these produced? Um, it, it was a wonderful product that they selected that um, was made with um, Herkimer diamonds. It was a Herkimer diamond necklace. Uh, so the diamonds came from Herkimer County uh, here in New York, and then the chains were being made down in the, the jewelry area here in New York, and the jewelry maker was putting all these together in her studio, and then we had to get them into the mail, and I will say that um, her, the maker's team, Joan Hornig, uh, jewelry did an amazing job pulling these uh, necklaces together, finding new sources when uh, other sources weren't available because people were um, were quarantined and couldn't couldn't make. They they did a lot of um, finding some backup sources and getting these these assembled. And then thanks to Amanda um, fulfilling these orders and being there for the customers. And uh, there, was, there was a real sense of being able to provide some joy with these gorgeous necklaces and being able to uh, come through and perform during this time when so much of the world felt like it had completely shut down. So, so I think it, it has been a, a a very um, rewarding uh, experience for us because really, I because Amanda and um, and Jones teams did such an amazing job, kind of moving the ball forward. Uh, so it was it was doubly wonderful uh, to have that that privilege. Diamonds? Who doesn't love diamonds? I looked up the article at Oprah's Magazine Online. So listeners, you've got to check it out. The diamonds are simply gorgeous. Awesome, Amanda. Well, and then um, 100% of the, the sales profits from each necklace actually is um, then the purchaser is able to choose a charity that they wish that um, that donation to go to, which is incredible too. So many people were uh, choosing... COVID-19 relief related uh, organizations, uh, food banks, uh, you know, so it was, it was really, it, it, it was a whirlwind, uh, but it was an incredible, it was, it was some light during such a dark time, you know, and I, it was definitely something very special and it kept us, it kept us on a very positive track. So that it was great. I, and it was even so special. I actually just went Herkimer diamond mining myself <laughs> um, so that I could really, you know, it, it, I could really understand it even more. And it was such a special experience. Uh, so I, I did that a few weeks ago and it was very, very fun. I have a, a lot of perfectly sized Herkimer diamonds for jewelry. So I'll have to get them over to Joan. <laughs> I see you have lovely little shops upstate where the locals can shop. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, so we, so right now we, our main pop-up shop is in uh, Mountaindale, which is in Sullivan County in the Catskills. We have an awesome little pop-up space within a, a, a market. It's called Forage and Gather Market. Uh, it's on Main Street and the town is, is it's small, but it's one of the most charming towns that I've ever visited. And, you know, there are so many local people that have uh, band together to really create community there, to uh, open up businesses, restaurants, shops. And it's, it's such a town-wide effort. So it's, it's been really great to be a part of that and to see it grow. And it has so much over the past few years. So we, that is our main sort of uh, pop-up hub uh, and then we also have a few uh, stockists 
that sell Silda's jam. Um, there's uh, the Hurleyville General Store in Hurleyville. Uh, we have Fulton Salt Market in the Seaport. Um, so it's uh, right on South Street. We also at the Hawthorne Valley Farm Store in Ghent. And then uh, we have a couple other that we're, that we're adding. We're in the process of adding at the moment. And we'll have more information on that in the next few weeks. That's wonderful, especially because now I think people are getting out of their homes and they want to like have an experience about New York State. It's a great day trips to take, being safe. I love, I think that is really wonderful, especially because it's fall too. Like that's a perfect time. It is. It is. Um, yet the leaves are starting to change and it's only going to get even more beautiful. And, you know, I, I think it's really great being being outdoors and having some activities to do that you um, don't feel as though you're you're jeopardizing your safety. Right. Agreed. Um, so this last segment, I really want to talk about New York Now. The New York Now Digital Market debut is October 3rd through the 7th. Um, congratulations on your New York Now Market debut. Thank you. <laughs> We're very excited. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> um, can you tell me what the buyers and the retailers expect to find in your booth? And what should the shoppers know about the curated market space? Uh, sure. So uh, I can take the uh, what will be in our digital booth. Um, a little bit of what you know I had, uh, had mentioned earlier, which is obviously still this jam. Um, we will have the, those 11 flavors. Uh, some of the, I'll give you a couple sneak peek of some of the flavors. Our newest flavor is cherry pie, and it's delicious. A gingerbread peach jam, we'll have that one. That is, uh, has always been a bestseller. We have a strawberry rhubarb. We have a strawberry lemon lavender. Um, blasberry, which is um, raspberries and blackberries. A blueberry elderflower. Um, so we will have all of those flavors available for, uh, for, you know, for retailers to take a look at. And then we have a few products that we, um, some home goods, some, some candles uh, that we have worked on with other makers that we uh, work with on the marketplace, obviously. Um, and then it, the really cool function of what New York now has, has set up with the digital booth is that we are able to collect, like to work with some of our makers that are also signed up for the show, you're able to find those makers on our within our um, our sort of page or our booth too. So, so that's really cool. So you'll know that there it's high quality New York made goods by really really interesting and talented people. That's great. That's right. and then it's um. You want to add anything, Silva, please? Well, I just w wanted to say that we're really looking forward to connecting with the retailers. This will be a new experience for us in the context of not only because it's digital, but because this is uh, the first kind of retail type type of experience like this that we've done. So we are really excited and are so appreciative for the opportunity to be able to participate in this. That is wonderful. This is great. I really enjoyed this interview. Is there any um, closing remarks you want to add? Yes, we're excited. <laughs> we're so excited and looking forward to meeting everyone and taking this to the next level. We want people to love their local makers. I like that's great. I'm wishing New York makers a great market debut. I have to say, I love this, brought me such joy. And I really think the listening audience is going to also feel that joy and they're going to visit you and have some jam. <laughs> Definitely. And, and for anyone who um, is maybe listening and is not a retailer, you can always find us on newyorkmakers.com. newyorkmakers.com. <laughs> Thank you, New York. I can say it one more time. Yes, NewYorkMakers.com. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Silda and Amanda. This was really awesome. And thank you to New York Now. This was great. Thank Silly. you, Patty. Thank, thank you, you Patty. So much. You're so wonderful. And thank you, New York Now. Thank Yay. you. Thank you, New Yay. York Now. 
To join the New York Makers community and experience their digital magazine, please go to newyorkmakers.com. To learn more about Patty Hughes and her upcoming syndicated show, Patty Finds It For You, please be sure to follow on Instagram at Patty Finds It For You. Thank you for listening to the New York Now podcast. Make sure to tune in weekly for engaging and insightful conversations, touching on the most relevant topics facing our community today. Visit newyorknow.com to learn more about our market and how you can join in on the conversation.